Tube amplifiers. We recently reviewed the pendant. In fact, it was my very first ever experience on a tube amplifier. We're bringing you another one today, being this 19.5 kilogram beast, the KN HA6A. Shall we discuss? So this tube amplifier is classified at the upper end of the mid-fi category, approaching the flagship category. The flagship category being $4,500 tube amplifiers all the way up to $20,000, $30,000. Now, this is definitely a step up from the pendant, but the pendant did have one thing that I actually like. But before all that, let's take a tour around this humongous transformer tube amplifier. The KN HA6A is a very substantial tube amplifier. It's very solidly built. I mean, I did state this thing's 19.5 kilograms, but its contours, its tolerances is very tight. This thing, I think, could even be dropped without any problems, obviously, bar the glass tubes. Now, let's take a quick tour around the unit. At the front, we have the power switch, on your left, my right, then 6.3 jack, 4.4 XLR, and 4 pin XLR. Now these two headphone outputs are not balanced. The connection is just a Pentacon and a 4 pin XLR, but internally this tube amplifier is single ended. Then we have the input switch here, single ended, 4.4 and balanced. Low, medium and high gain here, usually put a medium gain and I use 4.4. Two UV meters that look absolutely gorgeous when this thing's turned on. And then we have a button here. This is quite special. You've got trilinear and linear. This changes the sound of the tube amplifier, which we will discuss when we get onto the sound section. We have another switch up top, which switches from XLR input to RCA input. And we have the very clicky volume pot. Looking at the back of the unit, we have two RCA inputs, a pair of three pin XLR inputs, power, and a switch here at the back of the unit for the KT88 power tubes and the EL34 power tubes. Right now in this unit, if I spin this back around to you guys, Let's discuss some of the tubes in this unit because obviously these ones are all upgraded but the stock tubes you will see on screen, these are the ones supplied. Tungsol, JJ and Genilec. But the ones in here currently are the KT88 power tubes, Telefunken Pre and these rectifiers I recently updated. This uh, KN HA6A is quite powerful and it's been driving pretty much every headphone we've had through the channel. From Sesvaras 1266 all the way down to sensitive IEMs with certain caveats which we will obviously discuss. Pause the screen here for a moment to familiarize yourself with the specifications. The KN HA6A is a transformer based tube amplifier, not a OTL. This basically means we can run any headphone from planar to dynamic headphones without any worry. Sensitive headphones on this unit are completely fine, all the way up to 60 ohms. Even Sasvaras don't really have much of a background hiss. But when we approach the 80 ohm territory, this is where I use the Silver Litz impedance adapter created for us via Viking Weave. This impedance adapter completely silences the noise floor from all of ZMF's headphones at 300 ohm, the HD800S, all the way down to the Utopia at 80 ohms. I honestly believe if you have a tube amplifier that operates like this, you require one of those. So, it's ergonomic, it's beautifully designed, unlike the pendant, where every time you leant over to change the volume pot, you were at risk of burning yourself and getting third degree burns, you also get a cage to hide grubby kid's hands off of the tubes and saving you taking them to hospital and having to answer very awkward questions. So, also the Faraday cage that is supplied with the KNHA6A mitigates a lot of 
noises around the desk, such as your phone, etc. We have a fantastic potentiometer on this thing. The volume port's really good, very clicky, very tactile. I love the feel of this volume port. It really is nicely designed. In fact, I prefer it more than the bigger brother, the Kane HA300 Mark IIs you see on the tube bench on my left. The Kane HA6A is a very versatile amplifier, not only because you can access two separate power tube types, the EL34s. In the one I have currently, I use the Svetlanka Winged C EL34s. They sound luscious, which we will get onto in the sound section, but my preference is the KT88s, those champagne looking ones in there now. They're huge, they're beautiful, and I love it. Not only this, you have to be careful, because when you're swapping from KT88s to EL34, there's a switch at the back that correlates to each tube type, so that when you're changing tubes, you have to trigger that switch at the back of the unit. And at the front of the unit, this trilinear and linear gives you two different sonic characteristics that we have to discuss in the sound section as well. I genuinely prefer the sockets for tubes on the Kayan versus the amp sound pendant because it's far less finicky, it's very strong, it's very stable, and I never worry that I'm going to bend the pins. In fact, muscle memory has become so good that I can just plop it in, even not having to line it up these days. Um, and it's just been so pleasurable. Before with the pendant, I found myself having to line the tubes up and the tiny thin pins up so carefully, sometimes it would take five minutes. So tube rolling was a freaking nightmare. Now, all that aside, how does the HA6A sound? Let's discuss. Taking the HA6A stock, with all the stock tubes scrolling down here now, JJ, Genelec, and the supplied power tubes, I was not overly impressed with this tube amplifier. In fact, I preferred the pendant a lot more. I thought it was quicker, more transparent and just a more nimble tube amplifier. I genuinely enjoyed it and I was actually kind of regretting my purchase a little bit. I found it to be sounding a little grainy, uh, a little lacking in detail and it lost some of that romantic nature that I gushed about in the pendant review. Switching over from the EL34 tubes to the KT88s, things were slightly better. It was giving me more of a reference liquid sound, but it was more sounding like a solid state that was trying to be tubed. I seriously wasn't feeling it and I was regretting my purchase. Switching over to the trilinear mode, where it turns it into literally a solid state amp that's attempting to be tubes, I found the same problems. The stage was good, everything was kind of nice, just very mediocre. And then we said, okay, so that's my advice. If you're getting this stock, don't expect miracles. It's okay. It's not even bad. And on HD800S, it was an okay experience, yet it felt very grainy. On Sasvara's mid-gain, it was all right for romantic songs, it was all right. I changed over to the Svetlanka winged C EL34 power tubes. I changed over the pre to Telefunken. Now this was an interesting combo. The rectifiers were still stock. The experience went up dramatically. On Sasvara's, I don't think this uh, Kayan genuinely is a good amp for EDM with these tubes. Punch is there, speed isn't. Detail retrieval was getting better, stage was opening up, definitely layering was beautiful and holographic, and I began to get the tube rolling bug. Then changing over to some of these from Wyatt. Thank you so much. These pre's with the EL34s gave you a full-on lush, that warm, gooey tube sound. I did not enjoy this for a lot of my genres, but for romantic songs and stuff, it was fine. So I started mixing and matching. My rectifiers came from America. 
I changed over to the KT88 that I loved originally so much and I changed over the pre-tubes for these, the Telefunken. Now that is the magical combo for me. Sasvara got punch and impact. There was actually some speed changing over from the EL34s to the KT88. Now we were exponentially better than the pendant. Now performance was getting good. HD800S did not sound as grainy. Using the KT88 power tubes is leaning more towards a little bit of the solid state territory and especially if you're adding Telefunken on top of that. But I think I like that aspect of tubes. I find the same on the KNHA 300 Mark IIs, the LROGs are this sort of solid state sound but with the lusciousness and the holographic and organic nature of tubes. We will get onto that review, I promise, and there will be comparisons between all of these three units. But for now, back to the HA6A. KT88 power tubes, Telefunken Pre, and these rectifiers. Can it drive Sasvaras? Yes, with a caveat. EDMs, no. Luscious, mid-range-esque songs, slow songs, I think you do fine, genuinely. Um, it's not the best, but it's not the worst by any shots. I was spending hours on end listening to Catatonia from Sweden, OPEF, Liquid Tension Experiment. I was listening to Meatloaf live. I was listening to Hans Zimmer's live orchestra tracks. It was all engaging, beautiful, captivating, where the equipment just fades away and all you're left with is the song. I don't know how many bottles of whiskey I drank, but it was a lot and it was not a good thing. You definitely want to drink when you're listening to tubes. So tube rolling is very important. Moving over to the trilinear with my current tube setup that I truly enjoy on this unit, it becomes very solid state-esque. Still slow, but it takes the life out of it. It's really strange. It's like your mind, one moment, is there in the song and you're closing your eyes, leaning back, trying not to let the whiskey go up your nose, enjoying the song, and then you press that trilinear button and you're immediately going, this is what this amplifier is doing and I don't like that. It pulls me out of the song. It's not my cup of tea. Detail seems to be a bit muted, sound seems to be a little bit flatter, it seems to be a little bit drier sounding, though to be honest with you, KT88s versus EL34s, KT88s definitely provides a little bit more punch and heft. And I found experimenting, leaving the volume pot at around one o'clock and actually driving the tubes with this beast on my right, the Serene KTE as the pre, I was getting more for my money's worth in regards to getting outputs out of those tubes. It opens up the stage more, it seems to be a bit more holographic, it seems to be a bit better driven, definitely obviously a better pot. Let's talk about some of the headphones I tested on this amplifier. HD800S, superb performance. Better on the HA300 Mark IIs, obviously with those tubes, it's like $6,000, it's to be expected. Utopia was one headphone I actually fell in love with. It was a headphone that I was hit and miss about, check out the review up here, but on tubes, it was coming to life. It was fixing the organic nature, it was fixing the treble region. I think it might be one of my favorite Focals, period. It, it requires tubes and it was absolutely sensational. The Sasvaras, like I mentioned earlier, was really good for mid-range-esque songs. Very lush, very pleasant, but not a full-on Sasvara tube experience like the AIC-10 or the NV or the HA300 Mark IIs on my left. IEMs, uh, as a rule, I listen to the Ambient Acoustics MAD24 and MAD16, Dynamic Driver Kato's and the Planar Driver S12s, plus a bunch of others that are over there that are already waiting to be reviewed. Oh my god, we gotta get to those. It's a superb tube amplifier. If you're jumping from the low category and 
you are approaching the absolute upper end of the mid-fi category because it's still very expensive it's like three thousand dollars with the new tubes and stuff you add you're going to be spending close to four and then the problem is with it you want to experience more and that's when 300 mark ii's come in and nutless comes in and wa33 comes in and then you realize you hate solid state it pulls you into the music so much, you find yourself hating solid state. And that's really bad if you're a reviewer. So that's been the knha 6 a I've genuinely enjoyed this unit, not on the trilinear, on the normal mode. I enjoy KT88s more than the EL34s, and Telefunken is my favorite input tube. Love it. I definitely recommend it 100%, and I definitely think it's a step up from the pendant. If you have any questions in regard to this tube amplifier or you recommend any tubes to roll, please put it in the comment sections down below. And if you like reviews such as these and you want to get them before anyone else, consider joining us over at Patreon, where you get access to the private Telegram chat, you get access to yell at me about equipment and we talk about equipment pretty much every day. And if not, your views, your likes, your shares is all I require from you. Thank you so much, and I'll see you in the chat momentarily. Until the next one, peace.